guys, it's V. I hope that you are all doing well. I am definitely doing well because today I have a brand new build that I am finally ready to share with you and I'm so excited because I am really happy with how it turned out and I just, I'm excited. So I'm going to be walking through the build with you and kind of showing some of the different merges that I did and some of the techniques that I used um, in order to build this. And um, it's not going to be a complete tutorial, so I won't be showing you how I did every single part of this um, house, but I did try to include as much as I thought was important or things that I thought uh, would be interesting or helpful if you were trying to create something like this. And all of the different things that I show, I will be putting timestamps for in the description. So if you're looking for something in particular, you can look there. Um, but I am going to kind of let this um, build footage play through while I talk a little bit about the actual design of the house. So I really wanted to go with a mid-century modern design. And I hope that that kind of comes across not only in the shape of the house itself but also in the different elements that i used in the build um, the furniture choices of course but i also feel like the environment played a really big part in the design of the house as well so you can see here i'm kind of building into this little hill and i used those rocks to kind of create a rock wall like a retaining wall situation side note these landscaping lights were um, probably one of my favorite parts of the entire camp. But you'll see in a second here, I used these ferns that are part of the world in the front deck area here. So I wanted to use those to frame the entrance. And that was something that I planned uh, before I even started placing anything down in the build. I knew that I wanted that to be where the entrance was. And that is definitely something that I do in all of my builds. Uh, just try, I always try to look at the environment and um, figure out if there's anything that I can incorporate into my build, if there's like a cool flower or tree or rock or something like that. So now that we have kind of talked about the design of the house itself, um, I feel like it's a good moment to kind of have a little chit chat about these vines that you can see I'm putting in here. So when I first recorded the walkthrough portion of the video, I did not have the vines, so the, they're not included in that footage. And then this footage is when I came in after the vines showed up in the shop and I got them because I was so excited to use them. And I came in here um, to use them. And as you can see in that footage right there, I could not use them in this camp. There was not one place in my entire camp where I could use the vines because I only used half walls to build with and apparently vines don't grow on half walls. Vines only grow on full-size walls. Um, it, for some reason they made the choice to allow them to only snap to full-size walls. That's the only place that you can put them. So I was determined to figure out a way to create a blueprint that would allow me to place the vines anywhere I want it because that's very important and it just does not make any sense at all to have done it the way that they did it and I hope that they change that. Um, but they're not gonna change anything if we don't uh, express to them how unhappy we are. So that is what I did and that is what I encourage you to do as well if you haven't already, um, whether it's about the vines or literally anything else in the game that doesn't work properly, um, but especially Atom Shop items because if we are spending money on something, it should work. You know, it should just work. But in the meantime, we will continue to come up with workarounds uh, for the shortcomings of the items that we are given. And so that is what I did here. And I am happy to share it with you, although I am not happy about having to do it in the first place, but that is 
besides the point. Okay, so this footage right here is showing the first attempt uh, where I came in and I used the blueprint wall and attached the vines, but unfortunately it was like floating in the middle of nowhere. So I wanted to come back in and try this blueprint trick and I was a little worried that it wasn't gonna work, but it, it, do it does, don't worry, it does. I was worrying, but you don't need to worry. So um, I used this double high one, and as you can see, it's red and it never turned green, but I just decided to try it anyway. And it does work for some reason. I don't know. Uh, I, can't, I can't explain anything about why this game works the way that it does. I just, you know, I just got my vines in there and I got out. Like, just give me the vines and I'm gonna go. So I feel like that's kind of everything that I needed to say about the vines. It's not, I could honestly rant for like five hours about uh, the game, but I'm not gonna do that because I feel like we should just come inside, come into the kitchen. You know, I have coffee, I have corn, you know, are you hungry? Do you need a snack? Um, let's hang out. Uh, and I'll show you some of the merges that I did in the kitchen, okay? So <laughs> this is a reverse merge that I used to create this light and it's kind of a, uh, I don't know, unimportant one. I don't know, maybe people would really miss this if they came in. Uh, it's kind of subtle, maybe is the word I'm looking for. Did I say unimportant? I don't know. Um, but I used the camp module to float that bench up onto the roof or onto the ceiling, I guess. And uh, I put the light on top of it so that it just kind of has its own, I don't know, it's just a little bit different. Um, and you could see there that the front door is a free placed door that I just put at an angle and then I made it look like it's a sliding glass door. And the stove, was one of my favorite parts, or specifically the vending machine in the stove was one of my favorite things. I really was like trying to find a way to use the vending machine like in a merge. And I was trying to find some kind of like appliance, like I, could I turn it into a microwave? Um, and then I realized it would be really cute as the back of the stove, so that's what I did. So for the hood over the stove, I just combined this safe with the toolbox because they both have the same kind of metal look to them. This very like rustic, uh, rusty, I guess I should say, look to them. Um, and that's kind of like the whole vibe in the kitchen is very, um, lots of natural materials, wood, metal, um, like dark colors. It's very like moody in the kitchen. Uh, that's like the vibe. So here is the whole series of merges that I did for the stove. And you can see that there are some like, I okay, here we go. I merged the fish into the flowers, which I did end up taking out after the fact. But I did that first and then I merged that into the vending machine. And then the vending machine went into that little metal nightstand thing and then that went into that little table and then the little table went into the big table and then I put it on the rug so I could push it back into those destroyed walls a little bit more and then I added this thing in also after the fact because this would just be like more merging to drop in and I didn't want to do that so I put some stuff floating above a conduit and then I burned that big table you can see um, and then once you repair it, it's just kind of there. And that's how I got that smoke that's kind of coming up from the grill, uh, which I did remove the fish that are on the grill or were on the grill because it, it was just too cluttered and I didn't like it. Um, so uh, speaking of clutter, here is this whole shelving unit that I did a bunch of merges on. And again, I didn't record um, that whole process, or maybe I did and I just didn't include the footage. Um, it's hard to tell at this point. There was just, there was a lot going on in this whole build process and who knows? I probably have a bunch of footage that just got lost or something. 
um, or I skipped over it because I just I recorded so much and I redid things so many times that um, it got very complicated. So instead of trying to explain that any further in words, uh, which would only become more confusing, I, I'm going to move on. We are going to move on. We are going to move on into the next room, which is the dining room, living room area. Uh, we can just take a moment to enjoy the view. And now the moment's over. So I really wanted to have this very open feeling as soon as you turned that corner and of course to have the view just be wide open um, out into the landscaping. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, but that coffee table is absolutely one of my favorite parts of the build and I should probably add a counter for how many things are my favorite in this build because there are so many. But that's one of them. Um, and that light there is using the same technique as I used in the kitchen. I floated a stool up onto the ceiling and I'll show that in detail in a moment. But first, we're going to look at the fireplace. So I definitely knew that I wanted to do a kind of um, like gas fire pit feature on this wide open deck area. Um, and because I'm using roof pieces as my floors, I had to lift it up and then burn it and then kind of place the fireplace over and over again until it was in just the right spot. And then you can repair the roof and it just kind of goes through it, which was perfect. And this light is um, a work in progress at the moment, this footage that you're seeing, but I floated that stool above the fruit bowl using the camp module and you will see in a moment that I added a cycling light in between there and I wired it and I'll show you how I did all of that but this part right here is me adding a little extra piece on the roof so I wanted there to be a little bit more of an overhang um, coming out from the living room and I also wanted it to be raised up a little bit so that it could cover these conduit pieces that I'm adding for the cycling light. So I have two cycling lights in the living room. You can see one is in the dining room light and one is in that living room, this one right here. So I decided to use the actual pipe conduits for my electricity in this camp, uh, which is something that I don't normally do because it takes up a lot of budget, but I just happen to have a lot of budget left over. So I thought, why not? And this part right here is me wiring the cycling light through the stem part of that stool so that you can't see the wire. And then from there, I was able to connect all of it together on the roof. And um, my whole goal was to kind of make everything as inconspicuous as possible. I wanted it to look really clean. And so I hid everything uh, the best way that I could So all of this footage is just gonna be kind of showing how I did all of that um, As this conduit footage kind of plays through I thought that I would take a moment to say that if you are looking to Find me anywhere other than YouTube. I am on Twitch. I do stream uh, a variety of games there. It has been a minute because I've been kind of focusing on this video and apparently I can only do one thing at a time. But um, I also am on Instagram at Vapid Valentine and I will be posting what is called a guide. It's, if you look on my profile, it should be in like the tab section. And it's basically just a collection of posts that I was looking at for inspiration and reference when I was building this. So you can see like what I was going for and hopefully um, it will make sense. Uh, and hopefully I succeeded in creating the vision that I was going for. I feel like I did. Um, again, I'm really happy with how this turned out. So to kind of finish up this electric work, I decided to use this little empty box thing up in the top area to put my uh, generators inside. So I have these little Atom Shop 
generators that I would definitely recommend to anyone who enjoys building in the game. Um, if you ever see them in the shop and you don't have them, uh, I would I would say that is a must-have purchase because they're tiny and they're silent and you can hide them inside things and it's just a good item to have. So I put a couple of them in this little upper empty box area and there you can see like the this is the final result. Um, I probably could have made it a little bit cleaner, but I think it's pretty good. There's just that one wire and then uh, this fireplace. I ended up taking that top part out because I hated it. So that's not in there anymore. And then this is one of my favorite little parts of the build as well. Um, it's that radiation glove box and it has those little pipes and tubes and knobs and stuff on it. I just thought it would look like a gas pipe or like a water line or something. I don't know. Um, and that deck chair, I, I worked on so many different versions of that, but I really wanted to have, uh, like a loungy deck chair out there. This little bit of footage right here, I hope is going to make sense. Um, if you're wondering why I haven't included more footage of the build itself, it's because I didn't think it was going to make sense. So, um, I guess we'll find out if this does or not, but this is kind of how the skylight came to be. So I don't know how to explain this exactly. I knew that I potentially wanted to create a skylight because there was a build that I was referencing that had this really cool, like long, narrow strip of skylight basically running down the entire length of the house and it was really cool. So I did have that in my mind. However, when I created this skylight, it was not for that purpose. It was actually to create this overhang that you can see right here. Um, I needed the roof to overhang a little bit on that dining room area. And then that created this unintentional gap that I was initially gonna fill in. And then I realized like, oh no, wait, I could put a skylight in there if I just add a glass panel. It would be perfect. So I did that. And again, uh, I did not have any footage of the glass panel being added because I had no idea what I was doing at the time. And uh, to be very honest, I still don't know what I was doing at the time. I could, I don't know. I could probably repeat it. Um, I could probably repeat it again, but I didn't do that because I just didn't really know how I put that glass panel in. I just figured it out. Um, that was kind of this entire build was just like trying things over and over and over again until it finally worked somehow, uh, which is exactly what I did in the bedroom here. So I am not lying when I say I probably had about at least five or six, maybe more like fully completed custom beds that I had recorded and that I thought I was going to use. And then I just um, eventually ended up hating every single one until I made this bed. Uh, and I am happy with how it turned out. Um, although I am a little bit unhappy with like the, all of the bed options in the game. Uh, I feel like that's, I, I can never find a bed that I'm really, really happy with, but I do like this one. It's very custom. It's got a lot of different weird elements to it. Um, and I don't know, it's fine, it's fine. What else was I gonna say about the bedroom? I think that fireplace that's in the bedroom was also an accident. Um, I was attempting, I think, to make like a solid block of stone. And then when it was like halfway merged or like almost all of the way merged, I just, I was like, oh no, that looks like a perfect modern fireplace. That would, that would work. So I just, I fit it in the bedroom. And uh, I liked the way that that kind of came together. Mm. What else? What else? I think we're at the end of the walkthrough now. I'm just going to kind of jump around and, and look at the, the house from different angles, I guess. Uh, you can just ignore the legs of the chair <laughs> sticking through the, the floor there. That's not happening. Um, 
Oh, and here we go. So this is some, <laughs> I forgot. I forgot what footage I included in this video. So this is, uh, I hope this is not sped up too fast, but this is just the main structure of, of how I created it. Those were, that was not the right way of putting those words together, but um, you can just see kind of what I'm doing here. Obviously I use roof pieces for my floors and ceilings. And um, I did start out with two foundations in the bottom there, but eventually for budget, I took them out. So I think you just have to burn all the walls that are touching the floors in order to be able to remove them. But I did do that. And in order to get these top pieces, I just added walls on the underside and then you can remove them like so, not a problem. Um, and that's like the main structure basically. Um, and then I am gonna show in a second how I kind of was like offsetting things. Uh, and um, um, yeah. So here is the little section where I am showing how I offset things using the catwalks. These again are an Atom Shop item that I believe is worth getting. They are tricky and uh, sometimes they can cause some issues and problems, but if you know how to use them correctly, they can really be very, very helpful in your camp building experience. I don't know, why am I talking like that? Um, I think I'm talking like that because it's the end of the video and I, I know that we're in the home stretch. We're almost there. Um, but that is the basic technique for how I kind of offset everything. And then as far as the walls, I pretty much free placed all of them using that blueprint technique. Uh, I didn't show that right here, but I did show it um, multiple times earlier in the video. So that is about it for me. I really hope that you enjoy this build as much as I enjoyed making it. And thank you so much for watching. Thanks for hanging in there with me. We did it. Uh, and I hope that you have a lovely day, night, morning, all of the above. And I will see you next time.